Well, hello there. Welcome back. Um, I don't think I've done a What's For Dinner video in probably over a year, but when I asked you guys what you wanted to see on my channel, this is one of the most requested ones. Um, I took a little bit of break during the pandemic because honestly, I was just feeling so just blah about cooking in the kitchen and trying new recipes food shortages were really prominent in my area and it was just a pain to be totally honest and i felt really uninspired and didn't feel like you guys wanted to see any of that stuff but with groceries going up in prices life has been getting a little bit trickier and i've been pretty proud of what we've come up with um and i wanted to share them with you so i know you guys have been really hopeful for these videos so let's get back to the swing of things i came up with a lot of recipes a couple drink ideas and i'm really excited to share them with you guys so Let's get started. All right, guys, hello. Welcome back to another week of What's for Dinner, where we try to eat cheaply, healthfully, and tastefully. So since groceries and everything in life has gone up exponentially lately in price, we have tried to eat a lot less meat just because meat is so incredibly expensive and just eat on a budget. But um, I found this pork tenderloin, which is actually a bit more because I ordered it through grocery pickup than I had intended, but that's okay. Um, we are actually going to use this bad boy and make a um, creamy mushroom pork tenderloin pasta. I will have the recipe linked down below. It looked really, really delicious. So we're going to go ahead and try it. So first things first is we're going to clean up our meat, chop, slice it up, and dredge it in garlic powder, onion powder, flour, paprika, and a little bit of salt and pepper, and then get this in the skillet and fry it away. All right, so in here I have half a cup of flour, one tablespoon onion powder, one tablespoon garlic powder, some paprika, um, a little bit of Himalayan pink sea salt, and um, some pepper. And we're just gonna mix it up. We're going to dredge the pork tenderloin in it. Um, we have just cut them, that has been zoomed in now. Um, we're just cutting them into about one inch shapes. We definitely need to sharpen our knives. And then we are going to pan fry them for a little bit. All right, to our skillet, we just have a little bit of um, olive oil in there and we're going to take those dredged pork tenderloins and pop it down in there. Um, I let these sit in there. I didn't fuss and flip them over. You really wanna do that to be able to get the nice crispy coating on it. So when you put them on, let them sear. Don't touch them. Use your meat thermometer check. Um, I think I cooked these on each side for about five to eight minutes because these were thick boys and they were not dried out. They were perfect. They were delicious, but definitely use a thermometer to to kind of check um, as you go but we were super happy with them as you can see I'm about to flip them over and they get super super crispy and golden and delicious um, loved them highly recommend doing this um, don't fuss with them just leave them be and then you're gonna get these delicious little nuggets of pork <laughs> and then I took them out and let them rest on the side I didn't cut into them I just let them be keep the moisture in um, moving back to our pan, we are going to take some butter and start scraping up all those golden delicious bits on the bottom. And then we're going to add our onion and mushrooms. Let me just say this recipe definitely calls for you to overcook these bad boys. I would absolutely try to undercook them. Um, I could have gone ahead and just added the rest of my ingredients now. I feel like the onions definitely got super mushy and not the best. So undercook them or at least just don't cook them for as long as the recipe calls for. Next we're adding two teaspoons of flour. We're going to cook that down and then we're going to go ahead and add our marsala wine which was half a cup of marsala wine, a cup of chicken stock, and then a cup or half a cup of cream. Now next time I would definitely use a cream. The recipe can call for cream or sour cream or uh, cream cheese and I would cut down a little bit on the masala wine. I feel like it just needed a bit more thick consistency and creaminess and a little less wine flavor um, but overall it was delicious and we were really happy with it. I'm just going to tweak it next time and kind of doctor it up a little bit. Maybe add a bit more garlic, maybe add a little bit more seasoning. But so far for this first try it was really yummy and my kids loved it which they can be really picky and or they're getting to the age where pickiness is their thing um, but this ended up working out really well and being really delicious just added those pork chops back in there to kind of soak up some liquid and warm back up this doesn't look pretty but it was really yummy i highly recommend it the penne pasta was a really good addition because it had the ridges which kind of soaked up that sauce um i'm gonna tweak it next time but i feel like this is a really good starting recipe nice bare bones you know what i'm saying 
Next, we're going to make these incredible, like, caprese style panini kind of things. <laughs> I saw this recipe go around on TikTok, and this was one of the best sandwiches I've ever made. I was so impressed with myself. We're going to take some chicken breast, saute it up in the pan with some seasoned salt, some garlic powder, and some of this um, tasty, tangy ranch seasoning, which is super delicious. Highly recommend. And we're going to take some of these ciabatta rolls that I got from Walmart. And while the chicken's cooking away, we are going to toast these up in the oven. I just put them on broiler. I mean, my kid kids to turkey and cheddar one because they weren't going to eat what we were making but I used mozzarella cheese on one side and the other side we just left completely bare so we could toast them up got the chicken out started shredding it up in little chunks ready to put on our sandwich and pulled out our rolls they got nice and crispy and crunchy on one side and still kind of fluffy and soft on the other I decided to go in with a little bit more mozzarella because why not? And then I went ahead and added some pesto on the um, toasted side without cheese. I didn't want to add pesto too soon because I felt like if I had toasted it with it, it wouldn't have gotten crunchy and might have been oily and drippy and messy. So I did it after it was all toasted, which was a really good idea because it held up really well. So I just added some yummy pesto, some roasted red peppers, and then um, a my like chicken chunks. Um, and then I popped that back under the broiler just for for a couple more minutes to kind of get those warmed through and kind of toasted as well um, and then I decided to go ahead and add some of my balsamic glaze from Trader Joe's this was one of my favorite things I just love this stuff um, it's super good adds a little bit of sweet flavor to it I just love it I feel like it livens up the dish and then to add some freshness I went ahead and added some spinach and arugula I love arugula I just would eat that for the rest of my life if I could it's so good but if you want more like authentic you could go with some basil but let me tell you, this is one of the best sandwiches I've ever made. It is so fancy, so fresh, so easy, and so cheap. I highly recommend it. My husband and I loved them. Next, my brother and I made this really yummy cod recipe. I will have it linked below, but it's basically like a lemon butter, as you can see right there, some lemon zest and butter melted. Um, we like to cook over at my mom's house and try out new recipes, so that's what we're doing. We're cooking for her. And in that bowl, we have some garlic powder, onion powder, some salt, um, and it's a little bit of black pepper. We followed the recipe instructions, but let me tell you, this needed way more seasoning. So if you do make this, add some more seasoning, definitely some more salt and pepper, because it was a little under seasoned, but I really, really liked the dish. I think it was really good. We got it roasting or sauteing up in a pan. I roasted my favorite potatoes. I make these all the time. They're one of my favorite things. They're super good. I use some Badia ranch seasoning. That is awesome. Ranch seasoning, by the way, and my favorite Kinder's, the blend. Popped it on there with some olive oil, got them roasted in the oven, and then I made some of this rice pilaf from Near East. I love the Near East rice pilaf as well as the couscous. Super cheap. Get them at Walmart. The perfect side dish. This wine I had to share with you was one of the best wines I've ever had. It is delicious. Get it if you can. We had it with this yummy poppy seed uh, salad on the spinach salad on the side. This is one of my favorite meals that I've had recently. It was so good. Just a little bit more seasoning on the uh, the cod. The girls weren't going to have it, so they had some shrimpies. But it was delicious. We all had a great time together. Highly recommend. All right, we are trying out this um, Good and Gather Butter Chicken Simmer Sauce. I am assuming that it does not taste very authentic. <laughs> um, and unfortunately for my husband, I am the worst um, at making Indian food. I just cannot make it for the life of me. And so he gets <laughs> home cooked Indian food in the morning from his mom. So we're going to just try this out tonight. I am going to doctor it up with some extra spices and herbs and stuff like that, as well as, um, you know, some butter, some cream. We'll figure it out. We'll taste it and see how it goes. Uh, we're going to have it with some rice. And I'm just going to um, make this vegetable instead of butter chicken. It's going to be butter vegetables. <laughs> and we're going to do just like um, potatoes, some onions, peppers, whatever I can find. It's going to be a very non-traditional butter chicken. But we're going to try it out. So let's see. I got two jars. They're actually pretty small. I wish I would have got a third. I didn't realize how small they were because I did order pickup. So they're pretty small, but hopefully we can make it work. And we'll have some rice and some naan. I just tried it. And to be totally honest with you, it's probably one of the better jarred um, Indian cuisine sauces that I've had. Um, this doesn't taste as butter chicken to me. It tastes more like tikka masala. Um, but it's actually pretty good. So... Let's see, my husband will judge and tell you if he's like, no, this is absolutely not authentic at all. <laughs> but I don't think it tastes bad. So 
I'm pretty happy with this. It's only about two bucks, two and a half bucks a jar. So I'm excited that we found something that's going to work. So I'm excited for dinner tonight. We haven't had Indian food in so long and I've been craving it. So yeah, good go, good gather. All right, so first we're gonna cook our vegetables down. So I took this heaping chunk of butter and we're melting that away. You could use vegetable oil if you'd like, but I decided to use some butter today. Um, I used a, uh, a, a small and medium sized onion and slivered it all up in there um, and cooked it. I cooked mine a little bit under because I like a bit more of a crunchier onion, but you can do however you like. I then chopped up a yellow bell pepper um, because that's what I prefer. Um, and I thought it was just a little bit sweeter and I think it just really balanced the dish well And so I'm just gonna saute those up a little bit and I'm gonna go ahead and start adding my seasoning So just to the vegetables I added some garlic powder Quite a bit of garlic powder and then some of the kinder seasoning which is more garlic powder and salt um, And black pepper which is one of my favorites and my husband's favorite So I just did this to kind of season the vegetables definitely not authentic in any shape way or form, but it was good um, once those get seasoned down quite a bit, um, we're going to go and add our diced potatoes. These are just canned diced potatoes. You could obviously use fresh diced potatoes if you like. We just didn't want to have to um, cook those all the way through and take a while, so we just use some canned diced potatoes. However, I definitely would recommend uh, getting rid of most of the moisture because it will not heat up as much and can be kind of mushy. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and add some extra seasonings just to kind of amplify this dish up. I added turmeric, cumin, and some uh, gram masala just to add a little bit more flavors and some more um, spices to the vegetables. We then go ahead and add the sauce. This looked disgusting, but let me tell you, this came together beautifully. I went ahead and added milk. I would have added plain yogurt or heavy cream had I had it on hand, but I didn't. But I definitely recommend using a thicker, creamier base. Um, and stir that all in together. And let me tell you guys... This was so good. It came together, thickened up. My husband loved this. It's, I mean, he raved and ate the leftovers and was like asking for the le uh, leftovers. We had it over some basmati rice and some little non dippers. Everyone loved it. Highly recommend. Maybe not super authentic, but delicious nonetheless and inexpensive. So absolutely recommend. Um, New Year was super nice to gift me this amazing ice maker. We don't have any room for it in my house, so I actually gifted it to my brother and my mom, and they are obsessed with it. My brother loves it so much. It makes two different sizes of ice and these little ice bullets. It makes 26 pounds of ice a day. It is so easy, so convenient to use, and the ice is delicious. It's not that weird like plasticky flavor ice, which I hate. This is a BPA BPA free machine, and so you just get fresh tasting clean ice. My brother, we're going on vacation all together. We're going to a cabin and he's taking it with us. He uses it multiple times a day about it when he has guests over he has to show them he loves this thing so much I highly recommend it I will have it linked below along with a promo code to save some money but it's about to be summer guys and we're gonna need all the ice we can get especially in the south and I absolutely recommend this thing we have been very happy with it and they adore it it is his favorite thing he's ever had it's super easy to use really convenient and has a small footprint um, we made a lovely drink with it. This Western Sun Peach Favor Vodka is amazing for summertime, along with some Milo's Famous Sweet Tea. Super easy, super quick for people like me who don't know how to make cocktails very well. But if you want a nice, easy poolside drink, highly recommend it. We just filled our little glass with some ice about a third of the way to half the way through, depending on how much ice you like. We then took about two ounces or so you know heavy pour light pour depends on how you like it um of this peach flavored vodka they have watermelon flavored vodka all sorts of flavors that is an awesome brand of recommend it and then just a milo sweet tea topped it off it was delicious very deadly though because you don't taste the vodka you just taste peachy sweet tea it is super yummy highly recommend if you're looking for a good yummy drink and this ice is perfect it lasts a long time it doesn't get super melty and yucky best ice maker I've ever had. Highly recommend it. Alright guys, that's going to be it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, thank you so much for watching. This it was a it was a long time coming. I know you guys have been asking this for this video for a long time now. Um, and I've just had to get back to the swing of things. But I tried a lot of new recipes. We had a lot of family dinners. And I just was excited to share them with you guys. So, 
I hope you guys enjoyed it and got some good ideas. Keep a lookout for more videos coming your way. Thanks again to New, New Air for gifting us that amazing ice maker. All the links and recipes will be linked down below. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys very soon. Thanks so much for watching. Bye guys.